All right, Ooh. Mr. Brian Sales, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Warriors Collection, Mr. See Through It. It's been a long time. I think it's been at least a year, maybe two, since we've been on the podcast together. I think the last yeah. time, every time we come together, it's over controversy. The last time it was the Houston yeah. Takeda shooting, and uh, that that video had a lot of comments. You know, as we knew, it was kind of smoke out people on both sides of the <laughs> discussion, and all we were trying to do was have a discussion, and people right. would just get so in their feelings. <laughs> Some people, you know. <laughs> they were pretty yeah. mad. <laughs> people get so in their feelings, um, uh, but I mean, you know, this time it's not that. I wanted to check in with you just because you know we don't even chat as much anymore, but we, you know, mm -hmm. we're still on the same chat channels, yeah, and kind of see how you're doing, see it all, what's going on. I'm wearing my. My Warriors yeah. collection shirt right here. I have two of them. I have a gray one too. It's very That's similar to the one you have. Yeah, <laughs> and then of course I have my coffee back here. So um, we'll we'll plug the coffee. There we go. So, so, yeah, is... we'll plug the coffee uh, here um, in a little bit before we get out of here. But uh, what's going on with you? Oh man, it's it's you know it, just day by day living and uh, growing and. Just been doing a lot of growing, <laughs> a lot of things. Just been doing a lot of growing, basically. Uh, you know, we got the home set. We know you know, our daughter, she's going to be turning two in September. Uh, just growing the family and being more intentional with the things that I'm spending my time doing. Uh, mm -hmm. I think I'm 38 now or 39. I don't even know no more. My son usually reminds me of how old I am. Um, but yeah, just trying to be more intentional with my family and really valuing that time with them. And, um, yeah, because remember when we first met on social media, you know, I was trying to get the podcast going. I was trying to figure out what I'm gonna do with the business. And I don't even, you know, I spent some time with the podcast, spent some time with the business, but it's not even like my, my, my main focus anymore. If it happens, it happens. If, if the podcast happens, it happens, but I'm more focused on, um, cultivating what I have right now and going from there. So speaking on your podcast, you're on season seven. Season Episode seven. Yeah. Three is coming up or, you, or, or two. I think two just dropped. No, so episode three just up. We did episode two for the Father's Day one. We did that one. Okay. And, and so season, I mean, episode three just dropped. I'm um, working on episode four. But yeah, the, you know, I finished up episode, I mean, season six. It just ended. Um, I had to step away, and again, I was doing some more growing. Um, I, don't, I don't know if you're familiar, but you know, I've been walking with, you know, doing this walk with God, and and just been I'm familiar um, taking inventory of my own life, and yeah. So I just been doing that and been focused on that. And you know, season six was going. I was hyped up about season six. It was going to be, I thought it was going to be a certain way, and then I got to what episode I got to, and it just it just stopped. And a whole new path and direction I was going down. So the things that I was talking about before wasn't uh, appealing to me anymore. Um, I didn't see, really see any value. I didn't see any way that I was really helping anyone with the certain topics that I was, you know, that I had scheduled. Uh, so that season ended abruptly. And uh, I came back with season seven to focus on, you know, making sure that the things that I'm going to be talking about is going to be beneficial to everyone and, and make sure that I'm honing on in on myself to, to show that these things are possible. Um, with season one, I mean, episode one, I'm sorry, episode one, I focused on consistency, uh, commitment and persistent. A lot of times in my previous seasons, every time something didn't go right or the numbers wasn't looking right, my persistency would take a hit and I would, you know, fall off. And so this season, we're making sure that, you know, no matter what's going on, whether it's one view, half of you, no views, I'm putting, the, I'm putting the message out there and that in hopes that someone one day will see it and be like, I need to hear that and go from there. So no more am I really focused on the numbers. It's a, it's a struggle because we, we end up, we in a, numbers game right so we want to know what the numbers are but i'm trying to make sure that i don't look at the numbers i don't really pay attention to it i just put the stuff out there and and hope that whoever needs to hear whoever needs to see it can see it and be like someone else went through what i went through and they are doing better and that means i can do the same thing i can be better i can i can be free i can have joy i can have peace so 
how are you defining your seasons? Because like, how do we get to season seven? What does it take to, to end a season other than the abruptness ending of season six? Yo, it's, it, I don't, so every season I will start out and say, you know, we're going to shoot for 50 episodes. That's what we're going to do. We're going to shoot for 50 like five episodes. Zero? Yeah, five zero. We're going to have five, 50 What's the episodes. Long, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> What's the longest you've the gone? The longest season? Oh, so. Outside of season like season, three. That's, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> season three. Season three is <laughs> the longest one. And that's, and, and if you li- you check those season those episodes out, they were all on you know, uh, you know, so, um, injustice, civil rights things, or whatever the case. Because twenty twenty, so it was a lot of controversy mm. that we could talk about. I could have did probably a hundred episodes, but even in that season, I had to take breaks because the stuff was burning me out. Remember, many times we had a conversation where it was like, man, this is just the stuff mm-hmm. that we're seeing was just exhausting, and it just pulls so much from you. That even in that, I had to step away. And those were, you know, those were little signs that, you know, I was being pulled away from those topics. Uh, you know, uh, just, I don't even know how, I, like I said, we could have did 100 episodes, but a lot of times I was just exhausted from it. Uh, I felt the tug, like, all right, we don't need to talk about talk about that no more. It was just... It was so much, but that is the longest season because it was just so much garbage. And as I have um, grown, the my the things I wanted to talk about changed, and the things that I value slowly was changing. And it's just been a, a growing process, a pruning process. So now we at season seven, where um, like I didn't even usually episode one, I I open it up and I say, you know what, we're gonna shoot for thirty, we're gonna shoot for this, and we're gonna go all. Nope, I I'm gonna do. Until it's time for me to shut it down, and I'm gonna shut it down, and I'm, <laughs> and that's it. But my main goal is to be consistent, committed to it, and persistent, no matter what the storm looks like. And we're gonna go from there because, you know, I've made promises of this the number we are gonna hit it, and we ain't hit that number since season three. <laughs> What's the shortest season? The shortest season, I think it's six. Is it six? Oh, six probably episodes. Four. I was just saying, I think that there's some of them. It's like, damn, what happened to Brian? Oh, he's on another season. <laughs> All right. I think se- season four and season six might be the shortest ones because remember, season four I had moved, so I was like, "All right, mm-hmm. we're gonna we're gonna cover these things," and and then that was a nope, shut that down. No, it had to, had to shut that down, and it's and it's good because as you're growing, different things become valuable to you. You know, um, your 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 mindset yeah. starts to change, and that's 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 growth. So you, I can look at it as a negative, but I'm choosing to look at it as you know, that was important at that time, and now I've moved on. I, I, I'm doing this now. Now I'm doing this now, and this is where we're at. And until this change, this is where I'm at. And it may be ten episodes, it may be five, but I want to be consistent in it and and go from there. Can I offer this? I because I used to do the seasons. I only did a couple of them, um, and then I, te- I technically I would be on season three right now. But I don't even so when I upload, it gives you an option to put what season you're in and what episode you're in. I don't even fill out the season anymore. I just do the episode. Mm-hmm. I think if you do the episode counter, yeah, then you can see your progress over time, and you can see because I think when you do season and then you cut off the episode, then you can do what you want. I'm just thinking as I listen to you here, yeah. And, and hearing what some of your goals are is if you say, okay, well, this is season five, episode four, then it feels like you only did four episodes. You know, your mind registers, not the seasons, but the episodes versus this is episode 126. So then you can look back, you're mm. like, damn, I did 125 episodes so far. And you know, we've talked about this before. The average podcast fizzles out by episode seven. Mm-hmm. And so you can see your success over time. You know, whether you do one every week or every month or every three months or once every other week, just inconsistently that much, at least you can consistently see that you're still putting out podcasts. So right. that might be, that makes sense. you know, but then it, of course it takes you to go back and be like, okay, where are we at now? You know, I got 10 digits up here and 10 digits down there. I can only count, you know, to so much, but I don't know, you know, maybe next time you drop it, it could be season seven, episode four, or just be, this is episode 78. Because that's, yeah, that's a big I, number. 
I think right now I'm at uh, episode 106, 106. See? Think so about like, that. I've, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, you say, I've done 105 yeah. episodes out of everything that I've done over the past X amount of years, all the, all the 2020 bullshit, you know, all yeah. that stuff. But here we are, and it's the progress chart. You know, speaking of, back when I was on Twitter before it switched to X, you had the shows, the broadcast shows, and I, I yeah. thought those were great. You mm -hmm. know, and people could join those and have open discussion with you. I thought they were fantastic. But that's one of those things where, you know, I said, I'm done with Twitter. And it's not that like I didn't get in Twitter fights with anybody. It's just every time I open up the application, it was so negative. Yeah. The stuff that I was into, I'd read, whether it was sports, you know, no, no, nothing with cars. I don't, I think Twitter's terrible with any car stuff. But like sports, uh, latest news, you know, sometimes politics, it's mm -hmm. just so negative. And yeah. I just got so used, so addicted to just opening up Twitter to see what people were saying all the time. So then I took the app and I moved it to the back of the phone. Yeah, I did. You know, I'm not, thing. yeah, <laughs> I'm not one to delete my account. I yeah. don't think there's any value in that. Uh, but I moved it to the back of the phone and then eventually I just deleted the app, but I mm -hmm. didn't delete my account. Mm -hmm. Obviously, as I hit you up, what, uh, Earlier this week, I I just couldn't resist, man. I just had to get, now it's X. You know, I just had to sign into X and because of the presidential debate that happened on Monday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I go, oh, I just I just know X is blowing up right now. And it's a good place to kind of get the temperature of what people are really thinking. Yeah. You know, and holy crap. And so now yeah. I'm not really addicted to it, but I'm checking it all the time just to see what people are saying again. <laughs> Yeah, I, I looked at it um the day after and that was uh that was uh that that was it's a mess. I, it's a mess. It is it's it's really a mess. People are lost. I, I'm just mm -hmm. people are lost, uh people are confused, uh and people don't know which way to go. You know, we uh I I, I would say I was a fan of Trump. I wouldn't say I was a fan of Trump. I like Trump. I liked him mm -hmm. for uh, you know businessman um his his mindset so I, I didn't find anything wrong with how he you know handled things back in the past whatever uh joe biden you know he's he's joe biden and the things that he did back in his past i didn't agree with so uh, now we're in 2024 and the, the the how both sides are viewing these individuals They've both made them into gods, basically. Uh, Joe Biden can't do no wrong when he's clearly up there. He can't speak. Uh, Trump can do no wrong when he's uh, he's just fabricating things. Uh, I'm not saying that he's lying about everything, but some things you you know, and he knows that he didn't do certain things. He 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 he, uh, especially with the, the you know the Second Amendment. Uh, he he the one that introduced the the bump stock stuff. But people on the right won't acknowledge that. They're like, "Oh well, you know, blah blah blah." <laughs> so we go, we'll grill the left for their their stance on this uh, the Second Amendment. But because Trump is on your side, it's all right that he did. He took this stance. It's just weird. Right. Yeah, We're in a weird yeah. place. It, it's so weird. Like either both of them suck or they both suck. They, they, you can't say this one is good and uh, for his things, but ignore the fact that he's taking this stance and you're supposed to be like a hardcore you know, gun right person, but then this person has this stance on it and you're like, no, this person is pure evil because of their stance. It's it's a mess. Uh I, I all I can do is, you know, pray for the pray for the country and 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 that's it because uh either it doesn't matter who gets in. I don't know I don't know how they let allow Trump to get in. Um I don't see him winning because they didn't let him win last time. Um I don't even think our votes matter. Uh it, we live in a fairy tale world. <laughs> it's a fairy yeah, tale it's <laughs> it's kind of a damned if you do, damned if you don't, right now. And you know, we watched that clip of mm -hmm. Biden in 2019 versus Biden in 2024 in oh, the debate, man. and it is a completely different person. And it, I always, it's funny because I always say this on my show. It's uh, I don't talk politics, but this is an election year, and I think this is like probably the fourth episode where it's even come up. And it will continue to come up because this is a very pivotal part. And at the end of the yeah. day, I'm a human being in America and you're a human being in America. And this, again, this is not a political show, but we're people with real opinions and real mm -hmm. eyes. And, you know, not to, 
well, actually to kind of a play of words to kind of see through it, right? Yeah, like, yeah. Like your brand, you know, you have to be able to view through the lens of your own eyes and your own brain and your own uh, ability to process what it is you're watching yeah. versus, you know, I think a lot of us, a lot of Americans, a lot of the voters, they just rely on what they see on social media, what yep. they see uh, on a headline. Uh, DeSantis said this, this, this. Oh, well, this is a bad, he's a bad person. Instead of going back and listening to like an hour and a half of him having an unscripted interview in an open mm -hmm. forum with people to really understand what he's like. Because yep. when you do that, you may find that you agree on a lot of the stuff that he, he says and disagree on some things that you thought that you did agree on with, mm -hmm. with him. You know, and it's the same thing with every presidential candidate. You know, and I talk about that, again, I talk about All In Podcast on my show now with uh, Shamath and Freeberg, David Sachs, and um, Jason Cal Calconis. They call him J. Cal. Mm -hmm. And they've had half a dozen presidential candidates on their show, and it's been all unscripted. And they've, they haven't tried to attack them, but they've just all asked questions, Q&A, all four of them. And sometimes they'll get into it with the candidates. Sometimes they won't. Um, but, and they just had Trump on like two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, and they have an open invite to Biden. Like two of the guys, one of the guys contributed, contributed a lot of money to the Democratic Party. So he's, you know, anti-Trump, pro-Biden. But even he has said that over time, and this is what I always say about our presidents, history will tell us if they were any good or not. We don't know right now if they're good or not. Only history, looking back. That's my opinion. Mm. Because, you know, almost to your point, it feels like it doesn't matter. Um, because if something happens underneath their watch, you're going to remember it for being them. You know, my example is Trump. It wasn't the, the best. Uh, I, it, I didn't really know what he did on a day-to-day -day basis that actually personally affected me and my finances. Because at the mm -hmm. end of the day... That's all we really care about is how does this affect me and my family? Really, right? That's all right. we really care about. And I know me along with 46 million other Americans that lost our jobs in 2020 because of everything. Um, he implemented the additional stipend and that's how we lived for five months. I mean, my wife has a full-time job and so we were able to float. And then once I finally got a contract job again, five and a half months later, we were good to go. Now, I've heard people say, well, that wasn't Trump. That was da 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 just like you were saying earlier. That was da 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 I was like, well, yeah. all I know is as an American, he was president, and he signed that bill, and I got extra money, and I was able to survive for six months. So that made him out to be a hero. It's the same deal with, I guess, Biden just giving all this money away to people who want free money. Yeah. It's killing our economy. Yeah. It's destroying it, and people don't understand yeah. that. But all, all they know is they're going to look up and say, I needed that money. I used that money to get through it, so Biden is my guy. Yeah. You know, so, you know, at the end of the day, it's just one of these weird things. Um, I know that they've been pushing to put somebody else in instead of Biden to run. But for whatever reason, the Democratic Party decided that he was the best guy. And I couldn't, I'll say this, I, I can't tell you right now that I would vote for Donald Trump. But I know for a fact I wouldn't vote for Joe Biden because no. yeah. it's a sh if, if, if you vote for him, it feels like it's just a puppet show and there's a shadow government behind him pulling all the strings. Yeah. And it's yeah, just they, they, got, they have to get somebody else up there. Yeah, you, you have to. I mean, they, and as you were saying, you know, we have to be able to look, look at things and from a, a rational point, look at it and be like, if my if I was talking to someone else, uh, let's say I'm going to the dealership, right, and I'm asking them about a car, and that I want to buy, and they're they can't tell me nothing about this car. That they're, they're stumbling through whatever they're saying, and I'm like, eh, well, I thought I want to buy this car. Is, is there anyone else that can explain this to me? And and then someone else comes up, and they're doing the same thing, and they're trying to make sure the person that you know, the first person that you talk to, they're trying to say, yeah, what he was saying is. They're repeating it or, you know, trying to say, yeah, it, it, it's all good. And you're like, what? Are you hearing what I'm hearing right now? <laughs> no, yeah. What he's saying makes sense. What is he saying? I'm asking, you know, it's, you got to be able to look at that and be like, all right, this, this, ain't, this ain't right. This ain't right. And you're not about to take my vote. <laughs> I can't vote for you because you ain't telling me nothing. And the people around you are acting like this is okay. And I know this is not okay. So, 
I don't I don't I really don't know how Americans are looking at this and 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 really defending this nonsense. I I, I really don't. And there, it has to be some kind of like detachment from mind and body. I, I I that's the only way I can explain how people are they're not using their rational mind to see what's actually been what's happening in front of them in real time. And you know, you know how you know, people you you can doctor a big video pictures, but when things are happening in real time, you can't hide that. Right. Like you cannot you can't justify that. And right now we <laughs> And as you said, we most Americans only care about what how what's going to affect them in their home. And that you know, for a year or so, I was on Twitter hard trying to get people mm -hmm. to understand. Hey, you worried about the White House, but your mayor and your city council they're raping you. You know your your property taxes, your, the, the different laws that they're putting in place to get more taxes from you. You know the different zoning and all this. They're doing all this while you're focused on D.C. Your own county, city, state. Or is doing all kinds of things to you and you don't even realize it. You you don't even know who's on your council. Who's on the council board? You know, you, we are somehow we got played and we're focusing on DC and we got played and we're still being played. Yeah, they it's if your average person is gonna blame DC, regardless of who's there, for things that happen to them in their own communities. Exactly. Right. In their own like, areas. Your HOA yeah. could be raping you, right? Your HOA could be raising the 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 what is it, the the annual fee that you have to pay to to be mm -hmm. there, right? So because they now they have to regulate uh water or you know whatever you're doing on your sidewalk. Just these things that people are not paying attention paying attention to every day. Your school boards, your just all of that stuff. You you're not paying attention to that because you're so focused on DC like Biden. A lot Biden of, raised I, my yeah. HOA dues. Yeah, and and that's that's killing you right there. You, you know the different county things, your, your zoning. You missed out on a piece of land because now they have rezoned something, and you can't you can't have what you used to have. Like if you had chickens, or if you wanted to have chickens out in the city, or where you're not really in the city, but you're in that little soft area, and they come through and rezone it, and you didn't know that because you're looking at seeing CNN about whatever they're they're talking about. Uh, at that time you, you missed the, the meeting for that zoning and now that's trump's fault or biden's fault it's crazy yeah it's going to be interesting to see what happens man this is where to we're such a i feel like we say this every four years we're such a critical pivotal part in our country and <laughs> i i think anybody unless you're just a blind diehard trumper or if you're just a blind diehard Biden supporter you know everybody in the middle looked at that and said god we are we are in trouble. Yeah. You know, Republicans looked at that and said this, said that, and, and, you know, Democrats are like, holy shit, like we have an issue. Yeah. And, you know, I listened to a guy's interview named uh, Dean Phillips. I want to say his name was Dean Phillips. I want to say he's from the Northeast and he was coming in as a Democrat. He didn't necessarily align with the rest of the, the goals and the viewpoints of the Democratic Party. And like RFK, they pushed him into being an independent. And once you get pushed into being an independent, no one's going to listen to you. No one's going to support you. So he's not on the mm -hmm. ballot. But that's one candidate that I absolutely, based on what I heard from him in an hour and a half interview, I absolutely would have voted for. And I didn't agree with everything he said, um, but enough of it where he would have gotten my vote. And it's too bad because there's a lot of candidates out there that are like that. That there's, Because of the how, I'm going to say it, man, our government is corrupt. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's, you know, I'm proud to be an American. I love my country. I would live nowhere else other than here, but we got to figure something out at the top because when we have people out there that are equipped, uh, to run this country and they don't even get a shot, you know, mm -hmm. they don't have $500,000 that it costs per state at least to get on the ballot because they're not raising the campaign money. Then we're missing out on everything that this country was fundamentally designed to be. You yep. know, it's like, hey, do you want to run for city council? Sure. All right. We'll put your name in the bucket. Tell them what you want to go for. Put down your, your, the photos on the corner of every lot and run. But no, when it comes to the stuff at the top, it doesn't work that way. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, uh, our democracy should be that way. And it's not. And it's been fucking, I don't know, probably a hundred years since it's been that way. Yeah. But until it gets like that, you know, it's just, 
I think this year is going to be proof that we need to introduce a third major party because remember that website I tell people about, I think it's, I stand with.com or I side with.com something like that where you, it's a political third party website where you go through and you answer like a hundred questions. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yep. And then that. it calculates your responses and it tells you, it ranks you which party you're most aligned with. And on mm -hmm. that, there's actually, I want to say there's probably 12 or 13 parties out there at least but mm. at the end of the day, Democrat and Republican are the ones that rise to the top. And, you know, I think when I took it the last time, I think it was maybe 2020, right? When I took it in 2020, I think I was, I agreed with 58% of what Republicans were saying. And I agreed with 52% of what Democrats would say. And then they actually ranked like sixth or seventh on the list down from which my, my party affiliation. And then the first five, I didn't, I've never even heard of those parties. So, uh, you mm. know, that just tells you that there's a lot of stuff out there. And at the end yeah. of the day, we have our choice of the Democrat or Republican, and they may not be what we actually agree with the most as people. We're just been kind of groomed to think and believe that way. Yeah. I'm not even, uh, this year is just a, you know, it's another year for me. It's, uh, like I said, I I don't even know. I, I'm not. I'm. I don't plan on taking part in the the madness. I I haven't. Like I said, this the debate was the first one that I uh, looked at Twitter for to see what see the people's reaction and uh, to watch the different little parts of it. But other than that, I don't. I'm not really paying attention. When it's time to vote, I'm probably gonna write myself in. Or uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm probably. Can gonna I get write, your vote? <laughs> oh, I, whoever whoever wants it because uh, is I I don't want either one of them in there uh, because if if right. Trump gets in it's gonna be a madhouse uh, I can I feel like we'll see riots we don't need that nonsense especially ignorant people destroying their own homes like and then the, you know we have to pay for that the taxpayers gotta you know revamp mm -hmm. all that up like or or, or live with the consequences of it now looking like a, a, a deserted war zone because, you know, the ignorant people went in and destroyed everything. So it, there's no win. And then, you know, if Biden wins, then inflation, you know, things that used to cost nothing, you got to put your mortgage up for it. You know, I, 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 I'm telling the people right now, learn a scale. Learn something that you can mm -hmm. use so that you can help yourself, that you can be able to, you know, be able to feed your family. Or um, if you live in a city, go meet some farmers or whatever the case may be. But I, I, I really don't see how this can continue for another four years and you survive <laughs> or, you know, you, I agree. You, you make it out on the on the upper side of it. It It is set up for the people who are already at the top to maintain, to, to stay at the top and the people at the middle to bottom to fall further and further down. So you better start learning some type, some new skills or uh, learn, learn some, learn how to, I, I don't know, do something that's going to be, able, that's going to be beneficial to you in, in, in later life because this is all trash. Um, yeah, I think a key thing is when you think about Trump, and this is how I try to think about his presidential term and how he became president. Mm -hmm. And his term, when I think about it, it wasn't, yeah, he said some crazy things. Um, but I think that for whatever reason, the way he was, the way he acted, it brought out the worst in some people. It it told them it was yeah. okay to be that way. Yeah. He didn't tell people to do this. They just no. decided it was okay. Yeah. And I think that he gets the blame for that. And I do think that's a little unfair based on what I've seen. Um, yeah. You know, okay, so if this guy, if the president says this thing, he don't care, then I'm going to come out. He just told me and my homies to come out and be just all wilding out destroy yeah. our houses, destroy our neighbor's house. All of a sudden we yeah. tell that neighbor that no one talked to at the end of the street that we don't like the color of their fence. Mm -hmm. Whereas before we just would have let it be, okay, it's fine if you want your fence that color. I don't care. It doesn't bother me or anybody else. But now, for whatever reason, I feel like I should speak out and we're going to take this country over. And I don't think that was him. I think that's the people because at the end of the yeah. day, people are going to be people. Yeah. It's like this whole utopian concept that, hey, if we do, remember the whole defund the police thing? <laughs> mm -hmm. 
if we defund the police, we, you know, we don't need all these police officers. People can police themselves. Like, no, that doesn't work that way. Nope. You know, and, and look at 2020, look at what happened when we had a shortage in toilet paper and cleaning supplies. What happened? People were hoarding it instead of being given out to their fellow, you know, man and woman, or, or they were buying entire truckloads and turning around and selling it for 10 times the price because it's capitalism. You know, there are, and that's up to me, I'm sure freedom of capitalism, that is a very, that tells you who you really are when yeah. there's people around you who desperately need it the most. Yeah, that's, um, a, that's, that's so, that piece right there, that piece, I need people to like hone in on that piece right yeah. there. That is what you're dealing with, man, greedy men who, who want only for themselves and they don't care about you, your family, they want for themselves. And that's gotta, every, and that's going to exist. Right? That's going to exist. That's not going anywhere. It, it'd be just because, you know, if Trump gets in the office or Biden, no, that's going to exist. And it's going to, as we've seen it, businesses keep growing and you keep struggling. They don't care. The prices keep going higher. Things, things will go on sale. Right. But that was the, that was the original price and they'll count it as a sale. They, they may take off a dollar or even double it and say, buy one, get, you know, get the other one free. But all they did was, double charge that one that that first package and you're buying but you're buying two anyway but told you that is a buy one get one free man is evil man is evil and they don't care about you <laughs> people wake up <laughs> wake up wake yeah, up wake people up, wake always up. have ulterior motives think about the ebay thing right and it's remember ebay it's like okay well this item costs 39 dollars, and they want six dollars to ship it mm-hmm. so you're 45 dollars out the door this other person, they're like, oh, I'm only going to sell it for $15. Oh, but they want $25 shipping. Yeah. It's like, oh, their shipping is less, but they're they're like making that money up. It's like, you could tell, right? Yeah, they're just yeah. working the system. It's good. Yeah. I got into it with a guy once because he was selling something, and I go, how much is that shipping? And he, he wanted like $13 for shipping. And I go, dude, that thing is so small, you can fit it in a flat rate box. A flat rate box is, I think at the time, five or seven ninety five or whatever. Mm-hmm. This shit costs no more than eight dollars shipping. I know mm-hmm. that because I ship shit every day. Yeah, right. <laughs> if you don't like my shipping, then you don't have to buy my item. Well, I'm not going to buy your item because you're fucking trying to steal my money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Any way that people can get over, they're going to try it. If they can get over, they're going to try it. Uh, another point that you made that you know, just because Trump was a certain way. You know, whatever's in a man's heart is going to come out and people were just waiting for the green light for them to expose them on their own selves, their own ways, how they felt about people. It, it, you know, Trump, it, Trump can say what he wants to say, but that doesn't mean you have to go out there and do do those things, right. you know, partake in those things. You know, uh, you, you just had that in your heart already and you were just waiting for a little window. He didn't. He didn't green light it. He just he presented his red light, and you said, "Oh, it's yellow now. Let me go ahead and just take this." That. Trump said it, and this is this. Yeah, and that's all that was. That was just you know people having hatred in their own hearts that they wanted to you know showcase it to other people about whatever they wanted. And it, it's a it's a we live in a sick country. You know, I'll say this before we move on is again and i've said this before i said it earlier i don't know i don't think i would vote for donald trump right now but i just know for a fact i would absolutely not vote for biden based on the biden that we saw the other night and then some of his arguments as as well it's like Mm -hmm. well yeah trump wants to add a 10 percent tariff to the chinese and that's going to make everything cost more for you no it doesn't work that way you're charging this other country a fee to bring stuff in an extra mm-hmm. fee that doesn't get passed on to the consumer. It doesn't cost the companies here any more money. It costs the other country more money to bring those products here. Right. Exactly. So to me, and then by doing that, I guess if you do it enough, sure, you can, you're going to make a larger chunk in the deficit or, or clean it up versus, you know, not even raising taxes, but versus giving money, giving so much money away. All you're doing is making inflation in, in the deficit get even worse. You know, like I, honestly, I mean, you want to forgive my student loans? I'll take it. Yeah, I'll take it. Because again, again, personally, how does it personally affect me 
you know, that's mm-hmm. killing the country and I don't want my country to be killed, but man, I would love to get out from underneath these student loans like these yeah. other, other people have, Right. you know, how about me? Me too. You know, I'll take it. <laughs> um, but the other night on that first debate, Trump was, cause they always have fact checkers. He had, I think something crazy, like 36 lies that he had told up there. And then Biden had like nine and yeah, 36, 36, 36 37. Yeah. It was over 35. They always do the fact checking thing. I and funny, I'd say, well, Biden only had nine because he didn't really say anything. He just mumbled and said the same shit over and over. Yeah, you can't really hear but, what he was saying. Yeah, but if you're up there and you're saying thirty six things that aren't true, again, are these really our best two candidates? And but you can twist that a little bit, right? So if I say, you know, Brian, I've been buying this coffee for you from you for I don't know two years or whatever, and you know, I've probably, I mean, I've easily spent $500 in coffee in two years. Yeah. The fact checkers will say, no, you spent $486. That was a yeah, lie. Yeah. So, and it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so there's, there's some of that in the whole fact checking there too. You, yeah, can, the you can bend the truth. Yeah. It's the fish this big theory, right? I caught a mm-hmm. fish this big versus this big. Oh, you're a liar. Cause you said you caught a, a two foot bass and the thing was really only 18 inches long. But we I can't know trust Trump you. does that. Like we know he, he he's a storyteller. Yeah. So yeah, that's what he does. <laughs> not, and, you not know, defending his said- lies. <laughs> yeah. Not defending his lies. I'm just saying that, you know, if you go down those 36 accounts or those nine accounts, you know, you know, what, is it a lie? Is it not a lie? You know, Biden said yeah. that the unemployment rate was 15% when he took over the, that was a lie. It was only 6%. And that's a pretty big difference, but you know, $20,000 yeah. versus $25,000. Whatever. Speaking of cars, you mentioned your car thing earlier, going into the dealership and talking to a salesperson that doesn't know jack shit, yeah. which happens all the time, so which is fun too. When you ask them a follow-up question and they just start, you can hear, see smoke coming out of their ears because yeah. they don't know. They haven't been programmed to answer you that correctly. <laughs> what are you into right now? What are you seeing out there that you like? Man, I, I want to do some Overland stuff. I want mm. I want some, um, you know, that, that new... Uh, Forerunner came out, but everyone that I talked to about it is like, no, you know, because they die Why? hard last gen. <laughs> they want, mm. they want the V8. They, they don't yeah. care about that. They they want that V8. They don't even care about gas. And I can see that, you know, I, I, I like the V8s, you know, uh, it, and especially with new engines, you, you can't stay, you, you, new, new engines, new styles, you got to give it a year. You got to wait till the following year to get it. So, you know, I understand staying away from this one, uh, but I, I and the old gens just look a lot better. The Forerunners, I, I like those body, but that new body style does look good. I wish they would have put a that V8 thing's in. nice. That thing is nice. <laughs> that thing's nice, and the Sequoia. Yeah. Oh yeah, Toyota Sequoia. <laughs> that thing's nice too. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's what I'm looking at. I think with a lot of those guys, it's like, oh, V8, you know, V8, the power. It's a wuss if yeah. you're not a V8. Nobody wants a little four cylinder, or six cylinder. You know, and the engineers have made these, you know, that made these new, you know, setups for these vehicles to be, have a smaller carbon footprint and be just as efficient, if not more efficient than some of these mm-hmm. older ones. You know, a lot of the V6s now are so much better than counterpart V8s of the past that people have just fallen so much in love with. Mm-hmm. You know, even some of these, you know, inline fours out there, I dare say. And then as... You know, we have the technology to distribute the torque curves and things, especially when you're overlanding. Mm-hmm. Like you take an EV overlanding or something that's a, a hybrid, you switch into EV mode, there's almost nothing you can't do. You just have to worry about running out of power, which is why you still need that internal combustion counter, you know, counterpart. Mm-hmm. But it's it's funny when you said that because it almost takes me back to politics, right? Well, I'm always going to be this side because that's just who I am. You know, I'm always yeah. going to be V8. Vote V8. Vote V8. <laughs> That's, <laughs> I don't care how good them V6s and yeah. them, them little fours are. Yeah. Uh, what yeah. else are you looking at? Overlanding uh, is cool. Would you buy something and and overland it out or buy something that pretty much comes capable from the oh, factory? Absolutely. And no, I would to, buy it. And I mean, I would buy it and overland it out because those prices, oh my gosh. Like, right. Yeah. Yeah. Goodness great. I don't, who, kudos to those that can afford that. Um, mm-hmm. Goodness gracious. Those prices are just like, what? And then, you know, the prices that, you know, that they have the package deal, you're like, that piece on there, I don't know about that. I, I could have found something better than 
stat that you added. It, uh, so yeah, I would definitely buy a vehicle and then put the right pieces, the uh, a better piece, more you know, a piece that's more uh, that's gonna last. Uh, a lot of the stuff mm -hmm. that they put on there is gonna you got to replace it. Uh, so uh, yeah, I would definitely I, and I I think I want to buy something old like a an old maybe a Toyota Land Cruiser, an old one. Like, yeah, I think the strategy, I think the smart strategy is because I kind of, I don't do overlanding. I thought for a second, maybe it'd be something I wanted to do with my infinities kind of, but you know, you go with the vehicles that are equipped for that and just in observing and watching other people. Sure. There's the hobbyists that get their brand new, to, you know, Tacomas and forerunners and they look yeah. really nice. But some of the hardcore, hardcore people, they're buying these older ones because when you look at them, they are all scratched to shit because they know. Yeah, right? they, they know. know that you spend spend money in a good vehicle with a good motor, but everything else you're going to have to replace in order to make it exactly what you want it to do anyway. Mm -hmm. and, and it's funny when I look at like a Range Rover commercial and they're kind of like kind of light overlanding and they're going over these rocks. I'm thinking, ain't nobody going to buy that car and do that. No. Ain't nobody doing that. <laughs> That's <laughs> no, that thing is that's that's the you know that's your vehicle that you go around Saturday mornings after you clean it up, go to the cars and coffee, and you just drive it around the 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 town square or whatever. But you you're definitely not taking that to get mud, dust, uh, risk scratch, you scratch. You know you you not doing that. People no. stepping on it, like people are standing on other people's vehicles to get to help get the other vehicle out. Like you're not allowing anyone to stand on your your hood. That can literally dent from twenty pounds. Like you're not allowing anyone to do that. <laughs> you can that. tell when someone does it when you look at their vehicle and they have scratches up the side of their, like just mm -hmm. a bunch of scratches. Because a lot of times when you're on the edge, it's okay. Do I want to go over the edge or do I want to just drive through them hard, dry ass branches and scratch the shit out yep. of my car? And they're gonna pick scratching the shit out of your car every time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, or they're overgrown on both sides. A lot of guys wrap now. They they wrap both sides there, uh, the expel or whatever, on each side of the vehicle so that hmm. um, it doesn't scratch the paint. If it's a newer vehicle, they they oh, do that. Okay. But um, yeah. yeah, that's why I was, yeah, I'll go with the old and just you know mm -hmm. just make it as rugged as possible. But you know, I still have a desire for uh, you know something fast. I was telling my wife the other day that you know the ram the ram is good, the, the truck is good. But every now and then, I just want to go fast. We live on these back roads, and they are hilly, nice curves. I just, you know, I feel my, I want my BMW back. I, I want something fast to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is that a BMW sound? Uh, no, well, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, there we go. That's good. I'm going to use that as a clip. We're going to go viral off that BMW sound. <laughs> That's the that's that's the Brian, uh, that's that's the inline six. <laughs> that's the inline six. All right, yeah. let's let's plug Warriors. Let's plug your your brand. Hey man, you know WarriorsCollectionBrand.com. Um, go there. You know, get you a coffee as Jay has it. Uh, there's some. Tell apparel, us about some, this coffee and why it's important. The coffee is important because it helps build what I am trying to build. We're trying to get a land, some land actually. Trying to get some land to bring people together to help cultivate some warriors in in their mindset to help bring them closer to God, um, you know, teaching them new skills. Uh, so, you know, check out the website. Um, a lot of the just it's helping us build our empire that where we're trying to pour into other people. So um, and if you don't, you know, just maybe share it with someone else. But uh, the goal is to just help as many people as we can. Um I'm not trying to be rich or um, elite with what I'm doing. I'm just trying to help people and and you know show them the light and then point them to a point them to God basically. So WarriorsCollectionBrand.com. Check out the podcast Warriors Vision on Apple, Spotify, all those things, and and you know support the podcast and and you know listen to it and you may find out that we have some things in common and you may find out that the things that you struggle with, I struggle with, and I could point you, Absolutely. point you into the, the right direction to, you know, overcome those things. Uh, I'm still learning as a, as a young man, I would say I'm 38, 39, somewhere around now. So I'm still, still young and I'm still growing. I'm still learning. Um, I have a two year old or she's going to be two and 
it's, it's everything is new to me now and I'm just learning and really enjoying life as it is. I'm learning how to be content in those things. And I'm sharing this thing, sharing these things, sharing my story through my podcast so that because I know there's other individuals that may be struggling with their identity, um, uh, not to take up too much time. You know, I struggled with my identity with the military uh, veteran and I wore that proudly. But now, as you tell, I don't I don't have my dog tag, my dog tags on anymore because I have a greater identity, uh, a child of mm -hmm. God. And, you know, I'm, I'm it's, it's, it's a different way of living, a different way of viewing life. And you become more content and happy in what you are in and your desire is to help others. So. You know, check out the podcast, check out the YouTube channel, Warriors Collection Network. Um, and if it's if it's something that you can get behind and support, please do. Well said, man. Thanks, Brian. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good Thank seeing you. you. Nice seeing you too. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that conversation with myself and Mr. Brian Sales. To hear the rest of that episode and check out other episodes, subscribe or check out the RSS feed here on YouTube or subscribe anywhere you normally get your podcasts from. And consider supporting the show on Patreon, Patreon Hard Parking Podcast, and I will see you guys next time. The Hard Parking Podcast, a little bit of cars, and so much more available anywhere you get your podcast or check it out at hardparkingpod.com.